about this, guys? This doesn't even look real. I am so incredibly excited right now. I'm a long ways from home, probably a thousand miles away here in beautiful Caddo Lake in East Texas. And this is the start of an amazing week that I'm gonna have camping and fishing around the beautiful state here. Now this video is sponsored by Otterbox and you guys are going to see why. Now for a while I've hinted that I bought a new truck but I've been holding off on showing you guys because the reason I bought it. The entire next six days I'm going to be 100% sufficient sleeping, eating everything out of my truck and fishing the beautiful lakes here in Texas. Now this lake specifically, I'm only gonna have about two, two and a half hours to fish today. I launched out of Johnson's Ranch here on Caddo Lake. And this lake is a big, giant, vast, like it's a big, giant swamp. I think it's about 25,000 or 30,000 acres and it is just a vast, beautiful lake of cypress trees, Spanish moss, lily pads, a bunch of different types of weeds. I mean, it's an epic lake that I've always wanted to fish. Don't have too much time today, like I said, but we're just gonna poke around. I mean, I've obviously never fished here. I have no local knowledge. I'm just gonna go fishing and hope I catch something. So as I previously stated, this video actually is sponsored by Otterbox. And this core right here is the most important tool that I have for living and filming and fishing on the road here. Now these things are made in the United States. They have every single feature you could ever want in a cooler. I put ice in this thing yesterday. It's gonna keep the ice no problem for all six days even bear proof. Now if you guys like hiking, camping, fishing, hunting, anything out in the outdoors, I would highly suggest you check out these new coolers by Otterbox. Now when you click the link in my bio and check these bad boys out, you will actually get a free black dry box if you go ahead and purchase a Venture 25 cooler. Everything, all the information on these awesome things are going to be down in the description below. These are honestly the biggest thing that's going to help me live on the road because I don't have to go eat anywhere. I can save a bunch of money on hotels living in my car. I can save a bunch of money not eating out at restaurants and just camping, living out here in the woods. It's an awesome awesome amazingly peaceful time out here i mean look at the scenery i'm cooking breakfast in this and i'm about to go fishing right there it's so cool unfortunately i think the odds are certainly stacked up against us today let's see lipless crankbait i think i'm good for right now now the reason i say that is because of the recent weather that texas has had it is the friday before thanksgiving and this is the first day that it wasn't like below freezing in east texas every night so Right now we've got about 55 degree water temps and I think a week, week and a half ago it was like upper 60s. So the water temp has plummeted, there's been a lot of cold rain and now the water's muddy. Pair that with a dude from Chicago that has never seen a cypress tree before and you don't exactly have a recipe for success. The lady at the ramp was like, yeah, fishing sucks. Talked to three people that said they haven't caught one yet today. So, so all that means is that we're gonna be super stoked when we catch one. We're gonna keep it simple. There's a ton of weeds in this lake, so I think for right now, I'm just gonna start pitching all these big cypress trees. Maybe switch to a spinnerbait or something like that, but just a really small, compact black jig. Damn, they are ripping. I'm in this straight up bayou right now. Half of this lake is in Louisiana. Another big reason I'm just gonna fish the trees is the water. Right now, this time of year, I would typically fish the grass, but I hope you guys can see the water so muddy. There's a mat right here of really good green weed, but it's under a foot and a half of water. So typically this time of year, I would fish the grass lines and just find the really good clean grass. But I can't see any of that because it's a foot and a half underwater, all the grass lines. That's very strange. I've never seen this before legitimately. There's literally like a, like a ceiling right here. And once you butt, it's all canopy. There, you can kind of see it pretty good right there. It's all good green weed. It's just interesting. Interesting, interesting. There it is more. I am so lost. But that just makes it more fun. I don't know what I should be doing, but this isn't it. This is all like less than a foot of water. If I can catch one fish today, if I can catch one fish in the hour and a half, two hours that I have, then it'll be a success. I need to come here in the spring when the fish are actually like really up heavy on the hardwood spawning it would be so fun to flip cypress trees all day and catch big ones because there are a lot of big bass in this lake. It's just kind of difficult to fish, especially for beginners because everything looks so damn good. You see, the current coming out of this ditch is really moving. If the lake actually is up two feet like that lady said, then that's not a good thing. But this lake, like other lakes in East Texas, is unfortunately getting plagued by this evil little plant right here. This is giant sylvania. This basically can take over waterways. I, I remember, I'll try to put up a picture right now of what this lake looked like a couple of years ago when it was just overtaken by it. It's doing a lot better this year to my knowledge, but this plant, Giant Sylvania, I think it's from Asia, but it's a highly invasive plant. Like 
a tiny little sliver of one leaf can absolutely cover an entire bay in really not that long of a period. That's one. Hey! Unbelievable. We caught a bass. We caught a bass. There are bass in Cattle Lake. Look at that. That is beautiful. Unbelievable. Oh, wow. We accomplished our goal, guys. This fish is so cold. This water has to be like 55, 56. Unbelievable. Well, that gives us one little sign, one clue. That fish came off the hardwood right there, right on the current break. So maybe there might be one there, some over there, but this fish was set up right on the edge of the current and smoked that jig. Okay, I caught a bass. That's awesome. Was not sure that that was gonna happen. But here, this stuff right here, this is what I was saying. This is a John Sylvania. It's a floating weed. This is all it is, here's the roots. And uh, so this leaf right here, to my knowledge, this little sliver right here can end up multiplying and covering an entire bay. And you can't run, like a bass boat like this, you can't run an outboard engine through it, it gets so thick, it's very bad. Yeah, if you guys like flipping and pitching, this is the lake for you. There's endless targets everywhere. All right, so I just fished all around. I did not get another fish, unfortunately. We have about 20 minutes until sunset, so I'm gonna pull my boat out and figure out where I'm gonna camp and show you guys more of my setup because I'm sure many of you are very curious of how I'm going to do this, but that cooler is going to be key. You will see. Uh. Good morning, guys. Welcome to my humble abode. Time to start the day. Now, this right here is a setup I have wanted for quite some time. It's like 8 a.m., and I slept like an absolute baby last night because... We didn't have just an inflatable air mattress. We have a legitimate mattress back here. I think the size is it's a double, but it's very comfy. I have a down sleeping bag in there because it did get a little cold last night, down to like 35, but got my cooler right here. My old truck, as you guys know, I used to have a Suburban and I would love sleeping in the back of it, but the problem would be it wasn't big enough and I didn't have a real mattress. This truck has a long bed. It's a six and a half foot bed. So it's more than long enough. Time to cook some breakfast and start my day. So, on the menu for breakfast this morning, we have, we'll make some scrambled eggs, some breakfast sausage, and some hash browns. Very simple, very good. Nothing like cooking breakfast to the sound of gunshots. All right, all that is looking to be very close to being done. It is time to add in some eggs. Let's see how good I am at cracking eggs this morning. All right, no shell on that one. We're one for one. Oh, that's no good. Probably should have checked the egg before I bought that one. Let's try this one. There we go. This little breakfast hodgepodge we got going on right now is my absolute favorite to make in the mornings whenever I'm camping, doing anything in the outdoors. It's so simple and so damn good. All right, I'm turning the propane off. Just like that, you have a beautiful campfire breakfast. Now let's get a time check for you guys. What time is it? It is nine o'clock. Sunset's around five o'clock, like 5.15. 
do not exactly know where I'm going to fish today, what I'm gonna, well, I know what I'm gonna fish for. We're going bass fishing. It's Texas, you have to go bass fishing. But the problem is this lake right now, Cattle Lake, we're in the northern end of it, right at the river where it dumps into the lake. And like I said earlier in the video, it's high, it's muddy, the water's very cold, the fishing's not the best. The problem is I came here because this is a legendary lake. I wanted to fish as a kid. And it's, it's a Saturday here in Texas. Any lake is gonna be busy. I think I'm just gonna grind her out all day today. I either have that or I could go to like Lake of the Pines, Welsh, there's a bunch of lakes. Like East Texas is full of amazing bass fishing lakes. So I'm gonna eat this breakfast, get some motivation, and it's gonna come to me whether I should just stay on Cattle Lake and grind it out and enjoy the beautiful lake, whether I catch a bunch of fish or not, or go somewhere else and try to absolutely whack on them. All right, well that was just absolutely incredible. Now it's time to do some cleanup. Put the rest of the sausages in here because now we'll be able to cook these for the next couple mornings. They won't go bad. All right guys, I'm just closing up my campsite. I think this is going to be it for this video. This was just the very first video on my travel to Texas, kind of showing you guys a little more of how exactly I'm operating. I drove like 12, 13 hours. Got to barely fish yesterday, but I'm gonna fish cattle like to go to a completely different area. And that's gonna be the next video you guys see. Hopefully I crush them. There's, like I said, there's a lot of big bass in this lake. So if I catch like a five, six pounder, I think that's gonna be a victory because yesterday I accomplished my goal of only needing to catch one. Hopefully this day of fishing goes much better. I appreciate each and every one of you for watching. Peace. Thank you again to Otterbox for sponsoring this video. <laughs>